Hello and welcome to my latest video. In this video I'm going to be showing you how to paint an imperial fist and you can see it's already stuck together uh, primed black. Well I say stuck together his head and backpack aren't glued on at the moment and as you'll see throughout the video I have issues especially with the head keep falling off uh, so I do actually end up gluing it all together before I finish the model. Uh, so if you are going to kind of do the same sort of thing, then just go right ahead and glue it all together. It doesn't make that much difference. I just thought it would be a little bit easier for painting some of the finer details around the uh, the face, like the eyes and things. So to start off with, I'm using XV88 and I'm stippling the colour on. Uh, so I'm just taking the paint straight from the pot and then kind of scrunching off on some kitchen towel and then <laughs> kind of stabbing the, uh, the marine quite harshly with it. Uh, don't be afraid to get the paint like all over the model. So, you know, obviously things like the, the gun are going to be a different colour in the end, uh, but as you're doing this, you're going to catch all these different parts. It's more important to make sure you get all the ar armour panels covered uh, rather than, you know, worry about catching things that you're going to be painting over later on anyway. Okay, so really get the brush in there. So here you can see I've progressed a little bit further, covered the whole model now. So now we're moving on to the next colour, and this is Baylor Brown. And it's exactly the same process. Uh, I have um, swapped my brush now to a slightly smaller one. I'm using the uh, the Artist Opus uh, dry brushes. Uh, you don't have to use those. You can use kind of makeup brushes or something like that uh, to give a, a similar kind of result. It just it makes it a bit easier having the, the big round brushes. Uh, the reason I'm using a smaller brush now is because I want to be a little bit uh, more precise in the placement of the colours. So what I'm actually doing is looking for kind of like the big curves on the model. So if you look on the shoulder pads, there's obviously the big curve at the top. Same with the, the backpack with the kind of the ball bits on either side and the head. Um, anything with a big curve on that's going to catch a lot of light because I'm doing a top-down lighting effect while painting this. It's not just going to be uh, the same lighting all the way around. Uh, and the reason for this, it will allow me to focus more on the head and chest area. And also it allows me to be a bit more lazy so I don't have to focus quite so much on you know, the less important parts of the model. Um, but yeah, so, you know, it, it's pretty simple still. Uh, same same idea, stippling the uh, the big or smaller dry brush on the, uh, the arm panels. Uh, so now I'm going on to the airbrush. And to do that, I have to thin the paint. I'm using some uh, Ereal Yellow. And I put some in, obviously, a small well palette. Uh, this is one of the, the Redgrass Games... I think uh, well palettes and then I'm putting in some Vallejo airbrush thinner. Uh, you don't have to use that you can just put in some water if you like or just a, a mix of the two whatever I'm just lazy and just put some drops of that in uh, until it gets you know to a, a fairly thin consistency but still enough that it's only going to take me one pass to get a reasonable amount, reasonable amount of colour onto the model. Um, this will help blend in a lot of the texture that's already there, so you can see the model looks kind of awful at the moment. Uh, and this will flatten a lot of that out. And it'll also add quite a bit of uh, more yellow to the, the piece, because obviously when using uh, XV88 and Baylor Brown, there's not that much yellow. Now there's an element of yellow in them, in them because they are kind of yellowy brown colours. But obviously the Ureal Yellow is much more saturated in the, the yellow colour so uh, this is making them look a bit more imperial fist like. Uh, having said that though the next stage after this is going to be adding kind of some like strong highlights to the armour panels mainly to the the top ones so again it's going to be the shoulder pads and things like that uh, and I'm using some ice yellow by Vallejo you can also use dawn yellow uh, they're very very similar colours dawn yellow by Games Workshop uh, I would warn for airbrushing for these really light colours. Uh, so it's the same process as well, you know, put some in a well palette, add some thinner or water, whatever combination you want. Um, but, you know, just as a heads up, for, for light colours that are very close to white, they tend to be much harder to airbrush. And you're probably going to get some like dry tip or something like that. So, you know, just be a, a little bit careful when doing it. You just want the smallest amount you can see there it's almost just like a dusting just on the shoulder pads um, kneecap anywhere that's going to again catch a bit more light but just remember the more of the ice yellow that you put on you're taking away the yellow that you've already applied 
uh, you know the the ureal yellow so if you apply too much ice yellow you're not going to end up with something that looks very imperial fist like however later on when we get to the oil weathering uh, you can tweak the color that you apply to add a bit more richness to it so you can bring some of that warmth back you know but as i said just keep in mind that the uh, you know too much ice yellow will make it look too too pale uh, next stage is just to go back over all the bits where you've got uh, paint on things like the the gun and or fill in some of the areas like the the eye sockets um, just to make it a bit easier later on you don't need to paint anything black that's going to be painted metal uh, because of the uh, the metal colors I'm using they pretty much cover in one coat so this is uh, I think it was magnesium there I just showed you uh, by Vallejo it gives a really nice quick coat it's very very liquid as well you have to be a little bit careful because if you catch uh, like a recess it will run into it uh, so it, you know it's not very thick paint but it still has a really good opacity so it covers in one coat um, but you know pretty simple just pick all the areas out that you want to be metal so obviously I'm picking out the bits on the gun uh, all the recesses for the uh, I know that the joints uh, in the on the armor uh, try and be careful when you're doing this as well you can see I'm using a, a small brush now people always say you can use uh, bigger brushes for these kind of things I don't use uh, small brushes so much for the fine detail but the fact that they're more, they're just thinner in general so I can get them into more difficult to reach places and I don't have to worry about the fatness of the bristles catching parts of the model that I don't want to uh, you know it just makes it a little bit easier if it, you've as I've done stuck the whole model together now or apart from the head which you'll see in a bit <laughs> you know so I've stuck the, the whole model together and I, I want to reach into some of the, the harder to reach places I don't have to worry quite so much about you know catching all these bits I've already done work on uh, and making even more work for me to go back and fix it so now I'm using some Necro Gold by uh, Scale 75 uh, again this has got some really nice coverage you can just see the head wobbling a little bit there it's <laughs> not going to be the last time that you see that um, I haven't watered this down so this is quite thick paint uh, don't go too crazy but like also because so it's a brand new tube that I've got there for, uh, for painting this on if you've had the paint a while you might find that it's a little bit thicker or they've just mixed it differently so be careful about using paint straight from the the tubes or pots because it might be that it's, it's too thick uh, in this case I mean it was still bordering on too thick but I, I was just I just wanted to get going on the model so again this is just a tabletop model I don't want to spend a massive amount of time on it um, and the you know the gold was close enough that I could uh, you know start you know get it on there without covering too much detail so now I'm going to be painting the uh, the trim on the marine red using the fist and red you can see I'm painting this from the pot don't do this uh, my pot has been thinned with water so there's not a lot of paint left in it and every time that that happens I always add a little bit of water so it just makes it easier to get the last bits of paint out and also it means it's pretty thin so I can just use it straight away uh, but otherwise the paint will be too thick from the pot you do need to water it down but you can see there you know it just covers uh, nice and quickly uh, but if you want a different uh, um, company of Space Marines uh, you have to pick a different trim like so I think this is the third company for the, the red trim um, you know so there's all different sorts of colors and things so you know go and check your law uh, so that you know what color trim you want to paint uh, now I'm going to highlight it using Wild Rider Red to start with and the placement of the highlights for these is quite simple you just kind of matching it up to the highlights that you've already got on the shoulder pads uh, you know so where you airbrushed the ice yellow in particular just kind of put the, the trim highlights so they move into that you know that area that they line up uh, when you're paint, painting on the highlights you don't have to be super smooth when you're doing it so if you look at the one that I've already done which is the right hand side as we look at him you can see that I've got lots of horizontal lines and they're a little bit scratchy and things like that it kind of adds to the look of the model uh, with the you know the dirty grimy look again it's tabletop standard that you're going for you don't want to be spending a long time doing all this 
you know, fancy blending and things like that. Um, and what I actually find is if you just do some very quick scratchy marks, but you get them going in the right direction, they actually look as good as a very smooth blended thing anyway. Uh, and you know the other thing is obviously to get the the highlights in the right place. So I'm obviously doing very limited amount of highlighting on this. I'm not picking out all the edges on the model. I'm not painting all the light volumes everywhere. Just the ones that are important enough so that you can see them on the tabletop and they stand out strongly. So you can spend a little bit more time on some of them uh, to make those ones look good, but it's you know you're only doing very few of them. Uh, the other colours that I'm using to highlight the red, so I started off with, with the Wild Rider Red, then it's going to Kadeem Flesh Tone, and finally a Shabti Bone. And you're just going over and over, so uh, but, and as you go over it, with each new colour, you make the size of the highlight smaller, so eventually the final highlight is just you know, a very thin line in the middle. Uh, but also you can pick out some of the edge highlights, so you see there I went back with the Shabti Bone, and I just picked out the the long edge going all the way down uh, while leaving plenty of red next to it so that keeps a little bit of the saturation so you have the same issue as with the, the yellow armor when highlighting it as the more highlights that you put on top of the red the more that you're hiding the red and the rest the less red it looks so just keep that in mind when you're applying the uh, you know the highlights for it now we're going to spend a little bit of time this is kind of like the the main part painting part of the model the rest of it is more sort of just quick technique, but this is a stage where you do actually have to spend a little bit of time do, uh, you know, doing some painting on there. You don't have to make it perfect, and also the kind of the stippling with the big brushes at the beginning, you know, helps it, you know, helps this process a little bit because I'm using stippling again, obviously with a much smaller brush. This is a size zero zero artist papers brush. Uh, it's worn down a little bit. You know, you don't need to use brand new. Uh, expensive brushes for this you can use ones where the, the tips are worn down quite a bit and you know you might find there's a slight texture on the model or you can just still see some of the the earlier uh, stippling from the big brushes showing through even though you you know very quickly glazed over it with the, the airbrush with the, the aerial yellow and the ice yellow uh, so all those processes will mean that as you're doing this stippling on top of the highlights it, it will all kind of blend in together. You get like a very slight rough texture effect and that will just add to the overall kind of weathered grimy look of the model at the end. But also, you know, once we get to the uh, the oil weathering stage, it will all blend together a little bit as well. So you don't have to be perfect with this, but you know, just take your time a little bit more than some of the other stages to, you know, to pick out some of the parts on the model that could you help it look that little bit better than it otherwise might if you were just rushing the whole thing. So the other thing as well is, as I'm applying these highlights, uh, I mentioned earlier on, I'm doing these as top-down highlights. So, I mean, obviously you have to paint the front and the back and everything like that, but the main point of view on this model is going to be the front so that's where I'm spending the most time so making sure the highlights on the shoulder pads and the head are painted to a little bit of a higher standard than the rest of the model you know you can already see on that shoulder pad facing us there it's, it looks a bit neat to spend you know an extra minute or so just making sure they uh, blend together you're only using two colors for this by the way it's ice yellow and white I'm using p3 mora white uh, it doesn't really matter too much what white you use. You just do, and it's exactly the same process. So you start off with the ice yellow. You will find that because you're painting it on, uh, you want around about 50-50 water to paint for the mixture. But you know, test it yourself because your paint might be a slightly different consistency as you when you put it on the wet palette. But you know, around about 50-50 will probably get you uh, where you need to be. Um, you know, you stipple that on. It will look still brighter than the airbrush coat because the airbrush layer was so thin, the translucency of that paint means that the yellow underneath will show through a bit, which makes it look darker. When you're applying the ice yellow now, because it's it's gonna be a thicker mark, it becomes more opaque, so the, the brightness of the ice yellow uh, becomes more obvious. So it will still work as a highlight. Uh, now you can see I'm just uh, very quickly painting some highlights on the arm as well. If you wanted to at this stage, 
Uh, so if you look at the backpack as well, I think you, you can get, get an idea of the, like, the sort of rough standard I'm doing for some of these highlights. Um, but if you wanted to, you can spend a lot longer on this. You you could actually uh, end up with a, a really nice looking um, the display level model if you wanted to. Like obviously you'd have to spend a lot more time on it than I'm doing here. But you know if you just take your time, you can still want you still want to get all these little scratchy marks and things because they add to the character of you know of the model having that grimy look to it. But you, you know, you just have to make sure you take your time, get rid of any of the, the marks that look a little bit out of place or aren't quite blended enough. Um, and you, like I said, you, you'll end up with something that actually looks pretty fantastic. Uh, but again, it would take a bit more time. So I've been, you know, very, very quick on some of these marks. So now uh, I'm going to be painting in the, uh, anything that I've painted black now, apart from the eyes, is now going to be painted gray. Uh, it just makes it a little bit easier like if you wanted to you could paint these as uh, leather like brown leather and things the process would be pretty much the same you just pick different colors so something like rhinox hide uh, clean flesh tone and a shabti bone or whatever that'll give you something like a, a rough uh, leather color maybe some glazes of mournfang brown over the top but i'm just keeping them very desaturated obviously there's no color there this you know just black and white and gray and so you can see I've got a few grey colours on there. You can mix them yourself. If you've got black paint and white paint, you just need a few transition steps uh, with varying amounts of black and white, so it's either lighter or darker for the grey. Uh, but I did end up finding that actually I only needed kind of neutral grey and um, add a bit of white to that, so it was a slightly lighter version. So, you know, neutral grey, uh, white, and a step in between where you mix them together. And the main thing is, as you are applying the paint, again, you're looking for a sort of a scratchy, rough kind of finish. You don't need to be neat doing this at all. And you will find as well that the oil will make such a huge difference for blending everything together that it's just not really worth it. Like I said, for, for tabletop level stuff, with the oil weathering doing so much work to make everything blended together, uh, it's you know super quick and easy. So it's just it's really not worth spending extra time on something that... You, you know, just for gaming. But also, as I said, if you want to take it further with, uh, uh, you know, if you want to take something up to display level, you can use exactly these same techniques. Just take your time a little bit longer, be more precise and careful with the marks you're making. And, you know, you get like a, a fantastic uh, atmosphere for the piece. You know, it look still grim dark, if you like, uh, very dark and moody anyway. Um, but it'll just have a, a much higher finish to it. But uh, also, I mean, that is kind of true for all sorts of paintings. Uh, once you get, you know, you've had a bit of practice and you can paint fairly quickly, uh, you could, you'll actually find that if you just keep doing the same thing, so if, you, if you've learned how to do light volumes, get the light placement correct, uh, all sorts of things like that, you can either then go faster using those same techniques to get army level stuff out so it won't be good for close scrutiny you won't want to be spending a long time uh, you know looking at the fine details or you can spend a little bit longer and increase the uh, the amount of, basically you just it's increasing the amount of time doing the same marks but just more carefully and more of them so as long as you can figure out where to put light uh, and how the light volumes work that's most of the hard work uh, for something like this. If you see the the gun that I'm painting at the moment now, uh, it's kind of like a cross between light volume placement and then very badly done edge highlights. So you can see I've just done them super duper quick, not bothered about very fine transitions or smoothness of the painting. Uh, but you can see, so it's dark at the top near go closer to his hand and it, as it gets further down towards the barrel it gets lighter and lighter uh, and I, as you saw I painted it in very kind of roughly and scratchily oh and as a side note you can see the purity symbols there they're already painted red I didn't show you how to paint those it's exactly the same colors I used on the red shoulder pads uh, but then the the final kind of like little marks that I put on there some quick scratches and things and put a dot on the edge of the, the edge of the gun uh, where the scratch touches it, it just makes it look a little bit sort of uh, you know more interesting with a bit a bit of a uh, battle damage 
back to the the metal color just pick out any of the kind of rivets or studs and things on the model uh, this is just all preparation for when you get the oil weathering on although I mean actually if you want to as well because after the oil weathering we give it a coat of uh, matte varnish it dulls everything down so you have to go back and uh, highlight a few pieces if you want the metal to pop out a bit more and if if you're going to do that then save the painting the studs until uh, after you've done the oil weathering and things like that uh, because they're, they're so small and the oil will uh, you know go around the the rivets and things and give them a bit of shading so it's actually a little bit easier to do uh, and it's no point in painting it twice but because I the way I did it I just happened to do it in this order uh, but you know if you want to paint quicker and smarter than me uh, do the uh, the metal uh, rivets and studs and things after you've done the oil oil work uh, here I'm just painting in the uh, the purity seal the paper part of it uh, very very quick and easy again uh, Bale or brown to start with uh, and you're just kind of like looking for the raised areas and the folds and things uh, very quickly picking them out you might need to do a couple of coats because obviously with the, the black base uh, it doesn't cover in one coat but you can use that to your advantage to help with the uh, the highlight stage uh, so because the, the black primer shows through uh, very easily on the first coat you can cover the whole area pretty much then when you go back uh, the second coat you just pick out the raised areas of the parts that catch the most light and because there will then be more opaque paint in those areas the paint will look lighter and so you have basically highlighted it here, just using one uh, color of paint uh, I think you can see that quite clearly on the model there don't uh, be you know too precious with this as well uh, the second color is Shabti Bone uh, if you wanted you could just use the ice yellow as well if you just you know you've got it laying around on the the wet palette because obviously you use that on the, the Marines armor uh, but again don't spend too long blending this you can just do you know very kind of scruffy sort of marks and there are two reasons for this now on one the the obvious case of the oil weathering over the top is going to smooth a lot of the uh, the faults out but also because I'm going to painting some very quick text that'll uh, help to kind of hide any faults in the, the highlights as well so you know really don't spend too much time doing this at all just very quick and simple you know rattle through it I, I would also say that for this kind of painting if you're doing a uh, like a whole army of these this sort of technique is really the best for batch painting and the reason for that is especially when you get to the oil wash stage but also you know because of the airbrushing or you know the large scale uh, scale stippling all those stages uh, you know you can get a lot done very quickly but w especially when it comes to the, the oil wash because of the drying times and also for the uh, the transfers or decals um, again the drying times mean that you can be working on one while the one's drying and you'll get the process done much much quicker uh, so here you can just see I'm painting in the text uh, so hopefully you'll see how it kind of hides any of the faults in the the highlights now again don't spend too much time on this this is as I keep saying it's for, for tabletop only so all I'm just doing is some quick uh, dots and dashes uh, you know, don't try and write your name or anything like that uh, unless you want to do, you know, Golden Demon level stuff. Uh, and even then, no one's going to read it. So, <laughs> um, you know, just try and keep them roughly parallel. These dots and dashes are on each line, um, but, you know, don't spend too long doing it. Uh, for the, you know, I'm using a Vallejo model colour black. That makes, uh, you know, it's, it's got quite a, a good opacity for it so it covers pretty well uh, that means I can water it down slightly uh, slightly more than say a bad and black and still get a, a nice dark mark so if you uh, you know compare the two what you'll find is when you paint a bad and black down that uh, if you water it down to the same amount it'll be more translucent and you can also see just there you know I just did the, the quick dashes on the piece of the paper that go underneath the top ones that yeah it's kind of optional uh, I don't think anyone's really going to notice that too much uh, now I'm going to use some Sotec green and do a bit of verdigris weathering on the chest piece 
Now, you've probably noticed that I painted the chest gold, uh, th which was uh, necro gold from uh, scale 75. Uh, it might be, you know, you say it's gold, but it's going to be a kind of a, you know, a weathered, I guess, uh, bronzy colour, something like that. And all I'm doing is I watered it down and just running it into the recesses. Uh, if you are going to complain that it's not a red, uh, uh, whatever it's called, chest thingy, eagle, <laughs> then, uh, you know, I'm not interested. <laughs> if, for the purpose of this, I've painted it uh, to be a, a, me a metal a chest eagle. Uh, if you've seen some of my other Imperial Fists where I've painted them, I've painted those with red. You know, it, it doesn't matter. Uh, however, if you do want to paint them red, then you can just use exactly the same colours that you've used on the shoulder trim. Uh, it should be pretty quick and straightforward using the same process. Uh, you, you can see there as well, after I've applied the paint, I went back with a clean brush, so I just rub, uh, run it in some in my water jar, and then wipe it off on some kitchen towel. And then I can just kind of drag the uh, the Sotec green out a little bit. It just, it just stops any pooling, or you know, you get those tide marks and things where you water down paint. You leave it to dry. You get a ring around the edge, which will be uh, more visible. So, you know, just going back with a, a wet brush, you know, that's not overloaded but slightly damp. Uh, you can just rub those uh, bits off. Uh, so now I'm giving the whole model a coat of uh, gloss varnish. I used uh, Vallejo uh, Mecha Gloss, but you know you can use whatever gloss you want really. And I'm also going to be at this stage now. I'm going to put on some uh, decals, uh, you know, just to finish them off. Uh, and if you're wondering where you get them from, it's from the uh, Imperial Fist uh, pack. It used to be a case. I'm pretty sure that they would have Imperial Fist transfers in the standard Space Marine packs, but I don't think they do anymore, so it's a bit of a pain, but uh, it's quite expensive just to get some decals, but I guess there's other parts of Marine there if I uh, ever need them. Uh, to start with, before I put the decal down, I'm using some uh, Microset. Now, uh, you get Microsol and Microset, I never bother with Microsol, it's just not worth it. It just kind of softens the transfers if you want to, uh, you know, kind of bend them around onto shapes and things. but the uh, the micro set will still you know it eats away at the film it'll still make things form to the shape uh, you just have to be a little bit quicker because it's, it starts acting straight away so uh, you could da end up damaging the transfer if you don't move quickly and then then leave it uh, and it's not going to sit flat it doesn't matter you, you know don't worry about it the uh, the I guess the an <laughs> the arrow um, is a very simple shape and as this dries it will kind of form to the, the curve of the shoulder pad. The fist symbol on the other hand is an awful shape, the circle to fit onto the, the strong curve at the top. Uh, if you don't mind too much about it being off centre I or like too low, I'd put it more down towards the lower trim area, it'll make your life a bit easier. However, if you're going to put it in the middle like I'm going to do here, uh, it's just going to take a bit more work so you can see straight away what the issue is going to be in that it's it's not going to look anything like flat at this stage but all all i have to do is load it up with the uh, micro set uh, and then just leave it and it will kind of start to f like stick to the shoulder pad uh, it just may take like a couple of goes to get it to to look just right you know so try and get it to something like that <laughs> Uh, where it looks really bad, uh, but as it dries, it will uh, look better. What will happen is, so you can see here, it's got these creases in it. So before it's completely set, so you only need to wait like uh, 20 minutes or something like that, and then you can start doing this, and you you know you can roll the the transfer on. Don't rub it, just roll it. Uh, also, don't be confused. Some of the uh, the lines that are going to end up there is because I've got bits that are stuck into the model on the paintwork. You know, the stages where you're dabbing on the paint with the uh, the large brushes, uh, it's very easy to get particles in the paint there. I don't care because it's you know I'm just doing it quick and uh, you know very sort of sloppily. But uh, if you want to spend a little bit more time, then uh, you know pick those bits out while the paint's wet, and you'll get a much smoother finish. So you can see there now, you know, just rubbing it, it's sort of got the uh, the creases out. Then 
once you did that I gave it another coat of microset so as you can see it's a bit more of a bit of a faff really uh, for these round uh, transfers but um, you know just take your time and eventually as you keep adding more layers of microset it will you know it'll go onto the, the shoulder properly so now I'm going to give it another coat of gloss varnish this will seal the uh, the transfers onto the shoulder you can see his little heads wobbling about a bit <laughs> um, really trust me it's better to uh, to glue the head on I've used some blue tack uh, white blue tack and uh, you know some of the chemicals that are going to get in there uh, it's just, it just makes a mess it's, it's easy just to, to glue it on or just to leave the head off completely while you're doing it but now it's the fun stage anyway and uh, we're getting to the oil weathering so I'm using burnt sienna and black uh, and this is where you can tweak the colour a little bit uh, by adding more of the burnt sienna in because the burnt sienna is much closer in colour to uh, some of the colours that are already on the, the Imperial Fist so yeah, much closer to the yellows and browns that are on there uh, and then you just add a small amount of the black uh, just to obviously so it will work as a shade as well now it can be a bit deceiving when you look at them because while this is wet it looks very dark. It, I mean, it's going to stay quite dark, but also I'm going to give it uh, an ultramat varnish at the end, and that's going to make everything a little bit lighter. So don't pay too much. You have to kind of guess how it's going to look. So it, once you've done it once, you'll know, and it won't be a problem. But don't just take it as you know. It looks dark. So that's as dark as it's going to be on the model when it's finished, because it's not going to be quite as dark as this. You can see I'm adding now the Sansador, obviously I'm turning it into a wash. Make sure you get plenty on there. Now if you add too much Sansador, it doesn't matter too much, it just means you probably have to give it another coat later on. If you don't if you don't put enough down, it's going to look really dark on the model. Um, again, it's not too much of an issue because you, it takes a while to dry, so you've got a lot of play time with this. Uh, I'm putting it on very, very quick. You probably you know you want to spend a little bit longer for how you apply it I'm just literally just slapping it on there uh, if you find that any parts become too dark uh, then just take some of the sensor load up your brush and just cut keep washing it over and it'll clean off that area you can also take a q-tip uh, cotton buds and rub some of the area off as well however if you do that just be careful because you know it's going to get some uh, fibers and things onto the model so you probably will have to peel, uh, pick those off uh, here's Mr Wobbly Head again <laughs> um, but here you go so you can see it, just by uh, rubbing the brush in the sand store again you can go back and just clean up any areas that are looking too grimy generally what you want to look at is the areas that have got the most highlights so any area that you spent a bit of time putting highlights on so that's going to be the head that you, that's fallen off <laughs> the two shoulder pads and the, the backpack uh, sort of highlight areas. Um, it's not going to completely take any of the colour off. You know, so it's still going to, it's always going to look a little bit grimy once you've got some of that oil on there. But you, know, it, you do have the option of cleaning a lot of it off anyway. But, you know, make sure that you get it all over the model as well. Uh, we will be working on top of some of this afterwards after it's dried. So, you know, don't worry too much if it's if you make a bit of a mistake. But uh, you know, just it's kind of like it's the fun stage. So, so have fun with it. Here, I've glued the head on now, so I don't have to worry about the wobbly head syndrome anymore. Uh, and I mean, already at this stage, I actually quite like the look of it with the the glossy varnish. So, if you wanted, you could really keep it at this stage. Uh, and I think it looks pretty cool anyway. But I'm just gonna you know spend a, a bit more time on it now. Uh, so you saw there the Ultramap varnish from uh, was it Ammo by MIG. Uh, and what you'll find straight away is, uh, as you apply this, one, it's going to really kill any of the metallics. So you'll still be able to tell they're metallic, but they'll be really, really dark. I however, I don't have a big problem with that. Some people do, and they complain that if... So in the previous video, I did an Ultramarine, and people were like, oh, why don't you go over the uh, metallics again? Um, I, I'd like the look of them being dark and moody, but uh, in this video I'm going to actually paint over some of the metallic skin just so they have a bit more kind of shine in certain places. 
um, but also what you're going to find when you add the the varnish over the top is that the darkest areas will not look as dark anymore and that's just something that will happen with you know once you take a gloss shine away it, that and it works for all co colors as well so if you've got the red there it'll look really nice and rich while it's glossy when you put the ultramat over the top and it dries it's going to look kind of more pinky uh, any yellow colors are going to look lighter all that kind of thing um, but it will help to kind of enhance the very grimy grim dark look of the model so now what I'm going to be doing is going back over uh, the stippled highlights that I did before uh, and just picking them out a bit now don't spend too long doing this it's just again just you know very quickly stippling over the top not to the same size even uh, because the highlights are still there you can still see them this is just cleaning them up a little bit and making sure they stand out more uh, increases the uh, the contrast on the model so so it will really allow you to uh, work on the focal points so again head and shoulders will stand out a lot and you know it, it'll just work up better on the tabletop having the high contrast because you as i said you've taken away some of the darkest elements by adding the ultramat varnish so this helps to you know still keep that high contrast level so again very very simple just little dots um just in this really in the center of the highlights that you've already done uh, because hopefully, like you should have done all the, the hard work on the stage before the, the oil weathering now if you didn't and there are areas that you're not happy with and we're going to see that at the end of the video actually where there's a couple of areas uh, particularly on the lower leg where i just want to tweak it a bit you can still do that later uh what you make uh, and this is an important part actually and i should have mentioned this at the time when i airbrushed the ultramat varnish over the top of the gloss of the oil wash you have to make sure the oil wash is dry I used a hairdryer uh, and I gave it like a really good coat. Make sure you don't melt the model. It's very easy to do with, an, with a hairdryer. I've done it before while trying to bend forge weld resin parts that have got plastic components on and ended up melting the, the plastic. Um, but as I said, you know, just make sure it's dry. If you've uh, used thick oil paint, uh, you know, you haven't turn it into a wash you're going to be in for a world of hurt one because it'll take a long time to dry two it means you can't paint over the top of it because oil paint takes so much longer to dry than acrylic if you paint acrylic on top of oil paint that hasn't thoroughly dried the the acrylic will paint will dry first and then the oil paint dries afterwards which results in the dry acrylic on top cracking so you know just keep that in mind uh, if you don't you know if you use too much oil and not enough of the sand store uh, to thin it down to turn it into a wash. So now I'm going to paint the eyes to get that really nice glow effect. So what you can probably tell looking at the model now is it looks very dark and grimy. And that's really nice because it means that the eyes, when I paint those, are going to stand out really strongly, uh, high contrast and like a good focal part on the model. Uh, so I'm, again going back to the Sotec green uh, it's quite watered down it's around about two parts water to one part paint and what I'm, I'm going to paint these as OSL so if you saw the ultramarine video when I did that those that did not have OSL eyes that's uh, more standard kind of like how uh, Games Workshop paint the eyes in their space marines this uh, uh, isn't really like that but this is actually much quicker and easier so <laughs> Uh, as I said, water it down, around about two parts water to one part paint, and you're painting a good chunk of the area underneath uh, the eyes as well to get that OSL glow effect. Don't paint any of the, the Sotec green above the eyes because there's a ridge there, the light wouldn't naturally go up and it, it'll look wrong. But having it below the eyes will give that you know really nice OSL effect. Um, for the colours, <clears throat> As, so you already know it's Sotec green uh, then next to that so Sotec green is obviously on the bottom right of the wet palette in the top left of your screen there uh, next to that on the left is Sotec green with a small amount of white to the left of that same again with a bit more white and then obviously the final highlight is going to be pure white uh, so the first 
uh, mix. Like you uh, kind of have to judge it by eye. It's only like a very small amount of white for the first highlight. And I fill in the whole area of the eye, leaving a little ring around the edge, uh, and also then paint in the the lower ridge. So that and because it's a, a like a hard edge, that would then naturally catch more light anyway. Um, but you don't paint any of these highlights lower down. So there's already some Sotec green there. You have to keep that. If you start painting these highlights on for the whole area, one, it's going to look really kind of wrong anyway. But two, you again, you'll be taking away the color. So you need the Sotec green to stay on the, the face plate in a bit below the eyes so you can actually see the color there. Uh, whereas if you put the highlights over the top, you're taking away the color and it just looks like a white light then. Uh, then I'm just going back uh, now it's mostly white with a small amount of Sotec green uh, again going over the eye and also picking out a highlight spot right underneath the eye so the first highlight that on the edge was just a small amount of white with the Sotec green the second highlight was you know around about 50 50 um, but just make sure it's a lighter color so I think you can see more clearly there the edge of the lower highlight on the eye you know it's a little bit brighter helps to kind of sell the uh, OSL effect so now we're just going to add a bit of gold this actually does make a difference on the armor uh, you know to make that that gold effect to make it look really worn and weathered now so uh, I'm using uh, the scale 75 uh, dwarven gold and you know you just got to be kind of like very gentle as you apply it it doesn't have great coverage anyway so even if you are a little bit sloppy it's not going to be the end of the world but it's almost kind of like I'm dry brushing with a size zero zero brush so what you can see is when I, I touch the paint into the well there and I'm rubbing it on my thumb because I don't want any blobs like large blobs of paint so I have a lot more control like this but then if you see how I'm applying it I'm still kind of like you know very roughly using the edge side of like the side of the tip of the brush so uh, and then sort of scrubbing it all over but picking out very specific parts particularly on the forehead of the skull so it looks like there's weathered grimy parts on it um, but also other parts will be quite dull. Uh, here you can see, now I'm going back with the magnesium from Vallejo. Uh, so they're metal colour ones. There, there's a slight difference between the uh, the metal colour ones in these big pots and the other Vallejo metal colours. Uh, I much prefer the ones in the big pots, the metal colour. As I said before, they're very fluid. Uh, they cover really well but they don't have that many options in terms of gold so I tend to stick to them more for the, uh, the sort of silvery type colors and all I'm doing with this is just picking out some of the raised areas you know don't cover the whole thing but just enough so that it um, you get a bit of highlight on there now I'm just putting some weathering powder on the base I'm using dark sand again I haven't told you how to do the the base as such it, uh, because really it depends on how you want to do the base for your model and whatever battlefield you're using or whatever uh, but all I did was just plain sand PVA glue uh, let it dry give it a coat of black uh, then I dry brushed it uh, Vallejo uh, heavy grey uh, then uh, a shabty bone and that that's pretty much it uh, so you know very quick and straightforward and they can see I stuck some uh, a tuft of grass on now you, at this stage I, I thought that was finished while well, I was just looking at it quickly but when I took the photo I thought actually that lower leg looks a bit crappy <laughs> so I'm just going to go back to the model very quickly and just add a few more touches just to you know make it a bit more uh, interesting so all I'm doing is using some Mornfang Brown watered down I uh, I didn't manage to get this with the uh, the wet palette, but um, it doesn't matter too much. But what you're going to find is, so it's a roundabout, two parts water, one part paint, and you're just sort of stippling it on again, uh, covering the area, making the the lower uh, the shin area and the foot, basically making it darker. But you're sort of stippling on, I guess mud, 
your spatters, a very rough kind of texture effect. Uh, so one, it makes the area darker, so the knee pad stands out more. It gets rid of that horrible highlight that I very quickly put on before. Uh, you know, and it just kind of adds to the, the grimy look over all the model. So it's, it's really quick. It's not something to spend a long time on, but it just helps to, uh, you know, add, add to the, the whole atmosphere of the piece. And then what I'm going to do is go back with some ice yellow again. Uh, what you'll find is that on the model, because of it's a lighter colour, even though the oil does a very sort of smooth finish on it, because of the stippling that we did at the minute, there's still these little spots and marks and things that are a little bit darker in areas. So just look for a few of those and do like a little mark underneath with the ice yellow. And it'll look like there are dents and scratches all over the armour and it makes them look 3D. So only do it at the, the bottom edge of them. Don't go all the way around or anything like that. Just pick out the lower edge of any of these little dark spots that you see. Now you can spend as long doing this as you want. However, if you go too far with it, uh, one is wasting a lot of time because uh, again, it's a tabletop piece. So you don't want to spend ages picking out, you know, hundreds of all, all these dents and things, but it, it'll kind of, it'll be too much. So, you know, keep it simple. Just look for a few spots like I have here, just a few on the shoulder pad. Um, on the lower legs, things like that, maybe a, a little scratch on the forehead. Uh, and it, it just adds a little bit more to that really dark and moody kind of battered image, you know, helps with the atmosphere a lot. But, uh, and there we go, there's the, the final shot of the piece. And I think, you know, just that very quick extra made quite a bit of difference for, you know, the the weathering of the model. But anyway, that that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to see how to do this with an ultramarine, there is another video if you check uh, my profile. Um, and also I have a Patreon and a website where I take my painting a little bit further. So if you're interested in pushing yourself to more competition display level pieces like Golden Demon, something like that, uh, you know, I'll have a lot more videos uh, on uh, my, as I said, my Patreon and uh, personal website. But thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.